Hello, this is Brian. Today is March 28th, 2021. It's a Sunday afternoon, kind of a warm day. Today I'm in the far northwestern corner of the Angeles National Forest near Lee Avery Mountain. And today is a Spotlight on Trees episode. And this is one I've been looking forward to doing for quite a while, because I haven't been in this plant's territory. So what's today's episode on? Today, it is on the tough, tough, tough stalwart of the arid lowlands. The tough stalwart conifer of the lowlands. Gray pine, Pinus sabiniana. Been looking forward to doing this video for a long time. So, here we go. We got a beautiful, decent sized gray pine here. They can get, they can be anywhere from 40 to well over 100 feet tall. They are known for growing in some very harsh climatic conditions. Where I am is about an elevation of 4,000 feet above sea level. They can range from just a few hundred feet above sea level to up to roughly 7,000 feet. So, gray pine is named after its foliage color, kind of gives it a grayish cast or grayish hue. As you can see, all these pines over here, these are all gray pines. These are all Pinus sabiniana, and they kind of have a grayish hue to them, especially when backlit by the sun. When they're backlit by the sun, they appear very ethereal and sometimes ghost-like, which leads to another common name, ghost pine. And other names include foothill pine and even digger pine, which is quite a derogatory term against Native Americans who lived near Great Pine Territory and would uh, dig up roots for food. So. I don't call it digger pine. That's how I first learned of this tree was with that term digger pine. But I am not going to use that term because it's supposed to be pretty offensive to Native Americans who lived around where this tree grows. So, gray pine is a member of the foothill woodland. Usually found, uh, it's usually usually it'll be the first pine you find when you drive up into the Sierra foothills or in the coast ranges. This tree grows from from here in far northwestern Los Angeles County where I am. We're basically at the southern tip of this tree's natural distribution. And then it grows up the coast ranges through, you know, through San Luis Obispo and Monterey counties up towards uh, the Klamath ranges. And then it also grows scattered along the very foot of the western Sierra Nevada foothill slope. So, and then there have also been uh, reports, I don't know if they've been authenticated, but I've heard that they've also been found in far southern Oregon. I think it's the Rogue River Valley, but there you go. Look at that grayish color. Just a very nice color. They are a member of the yellow pine group. Believe it or not, their closest relatives are in order of increasing relationship, I believe. Increasing relationship. They are related to Ponderosas, Jeffreys, Tory, and Coulter pines. So these trees are closely related, especially to Coulter and Tory pines. Check uh, my video for spot spotlight video on the Coulter pine I did up in the Angeles National Forest back in 2019. So you can kind of see there are some similarities. So use that video to compare and contrast how they look. So this tree here is a pretty mature specimen. So we got these kind of kind of roughly furrowed plates and the furrowing goes pretty deep. It allows them to survive some light fires. This is an extremely fire-prone habitat. 
the uh, lake fire of summer 2020 burned really close to this area. It burned mostly closer towards Lake Hughes, which is roughly that way-ish, I guess. And it also burned up over Sawmill Mountain and Burnt Peak. And it also burned all the way to Liebre Mountain. And this is actually the western slope of Liebre Mountain. It's a long hogback ridge that extends from here and it extends for a couple miles off to the east. It's one of the higher mountain peaks in the Sierra Polona slash Liebre region. So they are a they are quite an a there are quite a common occurrence here in the Liebre area and you'll find them over towards Saw, near Sawmill Mountain and Burnt Peak too. You'll see them some in that area. You'll see them along the Pacific Crest Trail hiking up the north facing slope of Liebre Mountain. And sometimes you'll see them within a quick, uh, quick, uh, within a quick shot of Big Cone Douglas for Pseudosuga macrocarpa. So, so what other things make gray pine stand out? Well, as you can see, a lot of these trees here are pretty sparse in their foliage. These trees don't really cast a very dense shade, except for maybe when they're younger or if they're growing in very luscious conditions. These trees are pretty sparse because they grow in some harsh conditions. They can grow where summertime temperatures can get up to 110 degrees plus. Very hot summers. And sometimes they get some pretty chilly winters, although you'd be a lot colder as you go higher up in the mountains, of course. So. You'll find pockets of gray pine in chaparral, like here. You see pockets of them in chaparral, grassland, oak woodland, sometimes mixing with blue oak and valley oak. And uh, also mixing in with uh, birch leaf circuit carpus, uh, chamise, and uh, manzanitas, canyon live oak, interior live oak, and black oak. So there's a big stand of black oak black oak along the, the ridge of Liebre. So, gray pines also have very large cones. So, we're going to look at, we're going to look at a cone right here that fell. These are quite large and they are heavy and sharp. So you're thinking, wow, these look like those other pine cones that you find in other parts of Southern California. The cult, the, and that tree is the coulter pine. They are quite similar to coulter pines. Generally, they're a little darker in color. A little darker. Not near, not quite as long. You can see here, this one's probably about six inches long. Coulter pine cones can get up to nearly a foot in length. However, these are heavy. They fall on you. They will hurt. They will hurt. And could potentially be fatal. <laughs> So here's another cone right here. So yeah, they kind of have these claws that stick out, stick out from the cone scale. Not usually as strongly as coulter pine. Coulter pines usually have these long fingernail-like claws that stick out. But gray pine cones can occasionally have that as well. I've seen a few uh, that have some pretty decent claws on them. Um, and like most yellow pines, not all, these trees have their needles in bundles of three. So let's go ahead and take a look over here at the bundles of needles. So these needles are in bundles of three. I'm not going to actually pick, pick off needles. I don't believe in that. There you go. Bundle of three. Pretty long. The needles are about as long as coulter pine needles. So again, coulter and gray pines can be mixed up. However, coulter pines well, they can get a grayish green hue as well, are noticeably greener than gray pine. And of course, you look at a coulter pine, the coulter pine cone, you can notice the coulter pine cones are much longer. And coulter pines tend, they also tend to break up into multiple leaders above the trunk, above the main trunk area, but usually not to, not to the degree that gray pines do. See, gray pines, this one's actually forked right here near the base. A lot of those ones up there, you can see, they, a lot of them will fork lower. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. You can see how these trees are pretty forked. 
you can see the branches and leaders, they fork off. And they form these charismatic, uh, charismatic shapes. So, when they're, especially when they're in the really extremely dry, sun-blasted areas, they can be very sparse, and uh, these ones are actually relatively luxuriant compared to some of the ones I've seen. I've seen ones that are, that'll, that'll fork about halfway up, and then you'll see a couple of tufts of needles at the very top of the tree. So, here we go, here's another cone. You can see this one actually has some little claw, a little bit more like claws, kind of closer to culture pine. But yeah, but a gray pine grown in a moister location will low, uh, not as much desert heat and low uh, and more moisture content will tend to be a little more luxuriant. Actually, this one is a pretty dense, densely packed tree here. Those ones up there are definitely a lot less densely packed. So if you find it in a really good spot, sometimes on a roadside where sometimes some irrigation might trickle to them, or if you have them cultivated, they can grow large, sometimes, well, like I said, sometimes well over 150 feet. I've seen some trees that are well over 150 feet before. Incredibly, incredibly beautiful trees when they get like that. And of course, when they're nice and short and stout like these, they're very charismatic and beautiful trees too. Been a while, I don't know. Ever since I first saw this tree, I know I've known about gray pine since I was a kid, but the first time ever seeing it, it was just like my jaw just dropped. Just, I just totally enjoy being around these trees. They just make things so interesting. You see, you can see some of the pollen cones are getting ready to open up, so this tree will be shedding some pollen pretty soon. But yes, okay, so we're going to go back to the cones again, because uh, the cones have these large seeds in them that are supposed to be very nutritious. I've never tried gray pine seeds, but like its relative, the coulter and tory pine, the, close, the closest relatives, coulter and tory pine, their seeds are large, and they're edible, and they're supposed to be pretty good tasting. Never tried seeds from any of the three yet, but one day, maybe one day, I'd probably be more tempted to plant it and hopefully hope it germinates. <laughs> That'd probably be more my speed, but honestly, this is supposed to be one uh, one of those really good nutritious uh, food sources. So, especially in fall when the cones are uh, some of the cones are opening up, because some of these trees grow where they grow. They can be somewhat serotonous, partially serotonous. They can, the cones can stay closed for a very long time, but that's not always the case. Um, some trees in these harsh climates will stay, keep their cones closed. Coulter pines do that sometimes, but these, see, these cones are all open. So serotonin is not a huge factor in the gray pine. So I would imagine they could probably get established with or without fire. I would assume that maybe fire would be a more likely candidate to have them come up more. But again, coulter pine does the same thing. Its cones can stay close for a very long time, but then eventually they'll open up slowly. And sometimes they'll just open up like like a regular pine cone that's not that's doesn't flirt with serotony. And then uh tory pine is the same thing. It, its cones open up slowly over a period of time. On some, some they stay closed for a while, and other ones they just pop open at the end of the season. So, so we're talking about the three closest relatives, Tory, Coulter, and Gray. They're the most similar of the, of the yellow pines. In fact, that's what a seed looks like right there. That's actually a, a seed. That's a, that's a gray pine seed right there. So Coulter, Gray, and Tory pines. Very closely related, so how do you tell the difference? Well, again, with a coulter pine, coulter pines can also fork, but usually they fork f further up in the, in the crown, and they're usually broadly pyramid-shaped. So they're r r broadly conical in profile, the, the coulter pine. Tory pines? They're actually a little bit harder to tell apart, but again, you look at the cones. The cones are the clue. Again, 
Gray pine cones are the are the second largest of the three. Coulter being the largest, Tory being the smallest. Tory pine cones don't have those big claws sticking out. Yeah, I think they have a little bit of a prickle, but and they're a lot sh they're a lot shorter and a lot more squat and more rounded, a little more rounded uh, Tory pines. And then the big thing is if there are no cones in the trees, but you're looking at, you narrowed it down to Tory or gray pine, it's the needles. Three needles, gray pine. Five needles is your Tory pine. So there you have it. The beautiful Pinus sabiniana, gray pine. It's a fantastic tree to find up here in the foothills and mountains. It's not really not a really rare tree. Places is extremely common. And we just happen to be at the southern extent of its range, far northwestern Los Angeles County. That's why uh you come here to the Liebre Mountain area, hopefully more areas will open because uh, uh, the the fire damage was pretty bad in some spots, so it's going to probably be closed for a while. If you come here, come here prepare for a botanical excursion unlike any other here in Southern California. We're near Joshua Trees, a few miles down, and we got gray pines and along uh, along along the ridge further along towards Burnt Peak, uh, there are even some ponderosas over there. And you got Big Cone Douglas fir, you got black oak, you got so many different types of oaks here, so that's another thing you'd want to look into. So, I'm going to leave it on this. There we are, the beautiful gray pine, Pinus sabiniana. This was another episode of Spotlight on Trees. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video A, interesting, and B, helpful in identifying the plants of Southern California. Thanks for watching.